Well, so there's Hector standing up on the platform as big as life and quite as natural, and all them academy fellers are whooping and hollering like they was plumb crazy, Eb. So I says to Hector, says, um, Hector, I got a note for you from Fest this week, only I lost it. But I says, says I, I can tell you what's in it because I read it. Well, uh, what'd the note say? It said Hector didn't pass examination, so he can't play no more football. Just think of that. A darn good thing, Zeb, a good thing. Waste his time playing a dad darn fool's game. Yes, but that's certainly going to leave the academy in a hole. They was figuring on Hector to win that game for him. <laughs> How could Hector win the game? Yeah, he's got an ID for a mascot. What kind of mascot? I don't know. You was just about to tell what it was when I got there with that note. And that sort of busted up the rally, so he didn't say. Them academy fellers is a lot of young, smart alecks. Anyhow, all they do is come in here and steal Bull Durham out of a showcase. Mm. I hope Squidgeville beats them. Well, I reckon Squidgeville beat them all right now. And the game coming off the end of this week, the academy will have a darn tough time getting some to take Hector's place, I'll tell you. Well, it ain't none of our business. If I had my way, Zeb, I'd take everybody that played football out and down. Yes. Well, say, you take one of them pieces of cardboard there and a pencil. I want you to write out some signs. Well, uh, what fur? To see if we can drum up a little trade for this store. That's what's fur. Now go on, get your pencil and write down what I tell you. Ah, uh, sure. You're always making up work to do, Dad Bernie. Mm -hmm. Never mind now. You do what I tell you and keep your dad during trap shut. You ready? Yeah. Well, just put down there fresh laid eggs. And we'll put the sign on uh, one of them baskets of eggs out in front of the store. Uh, put down what? Fresh laid eggs. Well, uh, what you want to put that down for? Everybody knows that eggs is fresh when they're laid. Well, then, just put down fresh eggs. Yes, fresh eggs. Yeah, but that'll make people think the eggs in the other basket ain't fresh. Hmm, yes, maybe you're right at that. Well, we'll put down eggs. Ah, oh, shucks. You don't have to do that. Everybody can see that there's eggs. Yes, that's right. I suppose it can. Well, well just put the, put the card up without saying anything on it. Uh, say, uh, what are you doing now? Well, I'm going to sit down here and rest a spell. Writing that sign got me plumb tuckered out, Zeb. Uh, rest. Pity you ain't Rip Van Winkle so you could get a good long rest. Well, uh, who's Rip Van Winkle? What? Ain't you never hear tell of Rip Van Winkle? Why, he was the third, went out one day and was gone for 20 years. And you know what he was doing? He must have been looking for a place to park. Oh, no, he wasn't looking for a place to park. His wife gave him a dime and told him to go down to the store and get a dime worth of cheese. Well, on the way to the store, he had to cross the Catskills. Across so, the what? Catskills, Catskills. You so mean he... like a Catskill knife? No, not a, it's Catskill Mountain. So if oh, uh, if, well, how can cats uh, kill mountains? Oh, the cats wasn't killing the mountains. Now, Dad, then you said you're starting to get all mixed up again. The cats wasn't killing the mountains. Just get that straight, will you? All right, all right, I got it. The cat wasn't killing the mountains. No, so Rip, the mountains was killing the cats. Oh, they wasn't. They wasn't at all. That's just the name, Catskills. Well, as he was going along, all of a sudden, like, he hears a noise. And what do you think it was? Them dad darn cats again? Ah, oh, they ain't no cats. Can't you get that through your thick head? They ain't no cats. This here noise came from an old house, and the house was haunted. Haunted, huh? Yes, sure. Haunted by ghosts. Well, that's better than having the place standing empty. Well, sir, Rip knocked at the door and, and, and opened it and went in. On the table was three bowls. A big bowl, a little bowl, and a medium-sized bowl. The big bowl was too heavy, and the little bowl was too light. But the medium-sized bowl was just right. So Rip drunk it. Well, uh, what'd he do with the goldfish? Ah, uh, uh, there wasn't any goldfish. This here was a bowl of, um, a bowl of uh, soup. And, and then, just as Rip set the bowl down, there came an awful noise. Oh, an awful noise, like a big bomb. And, and uh, there... Where, there uh, what'd he want? A dime for a cup of coffee? What'd who want? A big bomb. Oh, not big... It was bomb, bomb, a big noise. And there stood a ghost. A ghost. Yes, sir, a ghost with a jug of liquor in his hand. And he says to Rip, he says, Here, take a swig of this liquor. But Rip was a law-abiding citizen, and he wouldn't do it. He wouldn't do it, huh? No, sir. Then the ghost says, he says, get into that bed there. But Rip wouldn't do that another. 
And then you know what the ghost done? He pulled out a horse pistol and made Rip get into the bed. I should think that as long as Rip was cornered, he took a swig of the liquor, too. Well, that's exactly what he did do, because the ghost made him do it. Made him take a great big drink of that liquor. Well, uh, uh, where is that haunted house, Deb? I'd like to take a run up there someday. Never mind where it is. I'm telling you about Rip Van Winkle. Well, Chip, as soon as he drunk the liquor, he went fast asleep. And when he woke up, what do you think he found? He found he had a headache. No, sir. No, sir. Found he'd slept for 20 years. Well, Chip, he starts out for home, and his wife sees him coming down the road. So I bet she gave him all fired tarnation. What? Send him out for a dime's worth of cheese and have him come back 20 years later with liquor on his breath. Oh, she didn't give him tarnation. She didn't at all. Oh, uh, oh uh, howdy, pal. Howdy, pal, yes. Phyllis, will you guys do me a favor? Why, yes, yes, yes certainly we will, pal. Okay. Now, listen. I've got to put in a long-distance telephone call. Absolutely confidential, see? Yes. Now, I want to use your phone, and I want you to forget anything you hear me say. You get me? Yes, yes. I want you to forget all about it. Now, if you do that, there's five bucks in it for you. Oh, sure. That's easy. I'll forget it for five dollars. Yeah, Chef Jenny forgets most things for nothing. Okay. Now, remember, you don't know anything about this. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, you, you have to ring to get Central, pal. Oh. That's it, yes. There you are. Yeah. No distance. Yeah. Oh, long distance? I want Maine 1920. Yeah. yeah. How's that job for Hector and the professional football team coming along, pal? He gave me some more signals the other day and... and oh, uh, good, good. I'll, uh, uh... Wait a minute, wait a minute. Hello? Tony? Say, this is... Is Bunk newcomer around there? Yeah. Well, call him, will you? Uh, Yeah. Yeah, with one more batch of those signals, I think we can decide whether Smith's the man for the job or not. Yeah. I'll let you know about it. Yeah. Oh, wait, but... Hello? Monk newcomer? Yeah. I say, Monk, you know who this is? Yeah, that's right. Now, listen. One of my backs is hurt and out of the game. I want you to take his place. Well, there's 50 bucks in it for you. Uh-huh. Next Saturday afternoon... Okay. Now, I'll tell you what I'll do. i leave your uniform at the Corn Center General Store. You get it? The Corn Center General Store. Yeah, that's it. You drop in and get it and report to me at the athletic field. All right, Monk. And, and keep sober. So long. Uh, you, you say you hurt your back, pal? Uh, hurt my back? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was the doctor I was talking to. I hurt my back. Playing football? Oh, no, no, certainly not. I'm not a football player. I am... I'm a businessman. Always think of me as a businessman. Oh. Uh, say, uh, where are those signals you got from Smith? Oh, I put him in the in the till, pal, just for safekeeping. I'll get him for you. Well, uh, how did you hurt your back? Oh, uh, I got into a little argument with a fellow. You did? Yeah, but you ought to have seen him. Yeah, he, he's in the hospital. You see, he made a dirty remark about me. Told me I didn't have enough sense to get out of the ring. Uh, he did. Huh? Yeah. Told me I didn't have enough sense to get in out of the ring. And you know what I did? Bought an umbrella? Yes, I bought an umbrella. No, no, I didn't buy an umbrella. Well, I... Signals, pal. Now, uh, are you sure you can get Hector a job, are you? Because hmm? I hate to be passing these out. Oh, me. sure, sure. I'll take care of him. Hmm. Well, thanks. I'll be seeing you in a day or two. Uh, oh, say, uh, you don't want to make a little bet on the big game, do you? I should say not. Anybody bet on football is that darn fool. Yes? Well, maybe you're right. Well, half right anyway, because anybody that had bet on the academy is a darn fool. <laughs> hmm. I wonder what in perdition he was laughing at. 